Welcome back and I've got another fun and unusual experiment for you today. It's one you can do at home as well. What we're going to be looking at is capillary action and can we get water to flow uphill. So you might have seen the last video I made which was looking at adiabatic cooling on expansion. So basically a good excuse to make some really cold dry ice. And I used a sock to um, create the dry ice from the cylinder. And when I'd finished, um, it was very, very cold and full of um, solid carbon dioxide. I shoved it in a beaker of water and it was what happened off screen um, that made me think I had to make this video. So if you're going to try this experiment at home, it's dead easy. Uh, you need a mug of, well, I'm using warm water, which works quite well, a uh, beaker because I'm a scientist, and an old sock, um, clean one, that's um, sort of fluffy, that's thick cottony material. And what we're going to do is we're going to put these two together and see if we can get water to flow uphill. So I've got my mug of uh, warm water here and I've got the sock and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sock into the warm water and leave a dry bit hanging over the edge of the beaker and then I'm going to set up the time-lapse photography and see what happens over a period of many minutes. So here goes. Let's shove the sock in and get it really wet. There we go. And I'll just leave it hanging over the edge and we'll see what happens after maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes. So I left it running only for a few minutes and within a few minutes, there was water dripping off the end of the sock. Now, this is gonna take some explaining because the water to get to here must have risen all the way up out of the beaker, come through the sock and come back down onto the desk. And to explain this, we need to know a little bit about capillary action. So the explanation of this is not particularly easy, but we'll give it a go. Um, in water, there are forces between the molecules of the water, which kind of holds them together, kind of causes them to bead up. But there are also forces between the material in the sock and the water touching it. And those forces are slightly stronger. So if any water molecule is moving around and touches the sock, it'll be attracted to that preferentially. And it's that which causes the water to stick to the sock. Now those forces are such that the water will always try and find an area that's a bit of sock and not water. So it works its way up the sock. And that's the basis of capillary action. Once it's gone over the top, um, there's also the effect of gravity acting down as well. And as a lot of water builds up, it flows down, gets to the bottom of the sock, capillary action trying to hold it there, but too much water builds up and finally you get a drop. Now, you might have seen my video on siphoning and siphoning is sort of similar. But what you've got to think of here is this is caused by different forces between water molecules and water molecules and water molecules and the material that is uh, causing the capillary action to happen. And the forces in the material in the water are bigger than those between the water molecules. Now, there are many real world examples of a capillary action, and I'm going to use just one of them now to tidy up the mess that I've made piece of paper towel, the force between the molecules in the water is going to be weaker than the forces felt between the water and the cellulose in the paper towel. So if I put the paper towel over the water, it looks as if it sucks up the water and it's the capillary action between the two that does that. So a simple but quick video. I hope you try this experiment at home. It's quite good fun and see if you can empty the beaker over a long period of time. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.